Agran just tweeted that any data mine stuff is probably wrong. Nah, he's bricking it, bro. He's fucking bricking it. Oh, shoot, guys. <laughs> Did we forget to encrypt it again? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, dude. I mean, this is fair, right? Some of it is, is likely fake, right? Especially, like, stuff that's, like, flipping later phases, right? Could easily be diff. Like, it looks like the stuff for Priest isn't even in yet. If it hasn't been mined yet, like, there, there isn't even anything else on Pants and Helm yet, which is just weird. UA is fake. It's fine. Crisis averted. We're still going for it. I don't care. I, I mean, let's be honest. It at least gives us some guidance about what they're thinking, what they're planning. I'm sure, there's some of it is probably not true. There are probably some numbers, numbers are subject to change. But, like, the fact that it's, like, on here at all means that they're... It's in their brain, you know? Starting off with Warrior. We've got Blood Surge. We already know about this. We read this already. Basically, 30% chance when you use Rage. I think this will probably work on Quick Strike, quick strike as well. You get a, a Slam. It's instant and costs no Rage. So, nice burst. Burst rune hit. Because, obviously, if you're dumping Rage on something like Whirlwind or Heroic Strike and you get even more Burst available with Slam, that's kind of nice for, for, like, bursting people like Priest Stan, for example. So this is pretty good. Uh, this is just going to be... All abilities cost three less rage, which I don't know the, the maths on it, but this might end up actually being more damage than this. Who knows? And then slam is now instant, but has a six second all in. So it's just going to be potentially like some sort of slam uh, rage dump build, maybe PV. I don't know. Uh, in rage regen, so warrior can heal for 30% max HP. I wonder what the cooldown is. Can only be used while in rage, Zerka rage or blood rage is active. Usable while stunned. Hmm. Uh, intervene. We knew intervene was coming from uh, the warbringer rune. So yeah, again, don't know what the cooldown's gonna be. It's an interesting one. We've got Rallying Cry. Is a little little BM trinket for the whole raid. That's quite nutty, actually. Yeah, but someone bans Sinostra real quick. Picking up UA. We don't like that. We don't do that here. Fuck UA. Uh, commanding Shout. A bit of Stam for the whole party. I wonder if it's gonna stack with uh, Fortitude. Who knows? Rampage. Warrior goes on a Rampage, increasing attack power by 2% and causing most successful melee attacks to increase attack power by an additional 2%. Stacking up to five times. So 10% AP. This can this ability can only be used after scoring a critical hit. That's so random. What is UA? Unstable affliction. Sword and board. When your devastating revenge abilities deal damage, you have a 30% chance of refreshing the cooldown of your shield slam ability and reducing its rage by 100%. So this is like a prop tank thing by the looks of it. I hope we don't see prop warriors in PvP. Fuck right off. Engrave braces with wrecking crew. Melee crits enrage you, increasing all physical damage caused by 10% for 12 seconds. This does not stack with enrage. Okay. Uh, okay, now we're on to Helm runes. These are most likely not going to be in the next phase, but it's been data mined, so probably subject to change or something that they're just testing out, according to Agrand, who I think is going for the hard cap, but uh, you never know. Increases all fizz damage by 10% when you have a shield equipped. And reduces the duration of disarm effects by 50%. Dude, I swear they're trying to make prot warriors a thing in PvP. What is this? Fuck out of here. At least they didn't get like a billion stuns. That's nice. Taste of blood. When your rend ability causes damage, your overpower ability will activate for 9 sec or 1 attack. This will not occur more than once. I mean, this is okay as long as you don't put uh, the fucking unrelenting assault in, right? <clears throat> Uh, Vigilance, focus your protective gaze on a party or raid member, reducing their damage taken by 3% and transferring 10% of their threat to you. They really want to buff prop warriors, don't they? Each time they're hit by an attack, your taunt cooldown is refreshed. Okay, that's that looks like a very herp derp rune to me. Like, I feel like the Chad prop warriors are not going to be running that shit. They're going to be running this shit. In fact, they're probably not. They're probably going to be tanking with a two-hander. So it's going to be this shit. Belt and boots for phase two is, is yeah, is what we know in the moment. Enlightened Judgments. Increases range on your Judgment spells by 30 yards. They really want Shockadin to be a thing, by the way. Like, if you look at these runes, there's so many things that are, like, Shockadin. Judgments 30 yard range and hit 17%. So this works on, like, raid bosses, right? Your Judgments. You just don't need to stack hit and you can judge raid bosses. Which is interesting that it doesn't also include Holy Shock. Uh, engrave your belt with Infusion of Light. I mean, maybe this is more of a rep thing. I don't know. Then... Because they get, like, melee hit, and then they need spell hit for the judgment. Something like that. I don't know. Uh, increase the damage done by Holy Shock by 20%, and your damaging critical strikes with Holy Shock. Reset the cooldowns on Holy Shock and X. That's fucking weird, man. Where's Mortal Strike? On the talent tree, mate. Where it's always been. Uh, refund the cost of your Holy Shock. Woof. The, ca the classic Holy Shock into Holy Shock combo. Love it. Chief of Light. Dealing damage with melee weapons increases your spell power by an amount equal to 30% of your attack power for one minute. In addition, your critical healing spells... Heal the target for 60% of it. Dude, there's so much crit stuff for Holy Palace now. 
It's gonna be a pain in the ass, man. They're actually gonna be Lotto class again as well. Guarded by light, each time you hit a target with a melee weapon, you gain 5% max mana. But the amount healed by your flash of light, holy light, and holy shock spells is reduced by 50% during the. I wonder if you can click it off. Uh, and then this is bad. They shouldn't add this. This is terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Each time the target takes damage, they gain a sacred shield, absorbing 500 damage, increasing Paladin's chance to critically heal. Uh, hit with flash of light by 50% for up to 6 seconds. In addition, causes your flash of light to heal targets with sacred shield for an additional 100% over 12 seconds. So you're going to crit. You get, you take, imagine you take Infusion of Light, right? No, which one was it? This one, Sheath of Light, okay? You do a, like a random melee attack and you get a bunch of extra spell power. Okay, sweet. Then when you do crit healing spells, the target's healed by 60% of it over 12 seconds. And then because you crit, you've got Sacred Shield, right? Because you crit, because if you've got Sacred Shield and it's 50%, then you get an additional 100% over 12 seconds as well as the Sheath of Light healing. All fucking stacking debuffs on the target, right? So you're going to have a Sheath of Light debuff. You're going to have the, the base Sacred Shield debuff. You're going to have the proc Sacred Shield debuff. And then you're going to have the random bullshittery Flash of Heal, Heal Over Time bullshit debuff. Like, hello? My eyes, bro. Just delete the whole class already. Like, it's fucking trash. Oh, my fucking God. Like, Paladin is just straight into the S tier, man. Literally grabbed by the dick and just yoinked fucking straight up the list. Sorry, grabbed by the fucking dick and yoinked straight up the list. That's my bad. We are talking about paladins. Your melee critical strikes reset the cooldowns of Holy Shock and Exorcism. Dude, fucking everything resets the cooldown of Holy Shock and Exorcism. What is this? Art of War. You just balling in with melee crits. Like, run the Holy Shock thing while you're at it, right? Bang out some Holy Shock crits as well. What the fuck, man? Like, look at the state of this shit. There's no way, bro. There's no way all of this shit can be real. It's fucking absurd. We're not even at the fucking shit that's not in yet, right? We're, okay, we're just past boots. Sorry, my bad. This was boots. This was the end of the stuff that's that's meant to be like confirmed, right? Then we got braces. Improved hammer of wrath. The cooldown of hammer of wrath is reset each time it damages an enemy below 10% health. Of oh, fucking course it is. Fucking hammer of wrath, Andy's just coming in going hammer of wrath, hammer of 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 and then you're finally fucking dead after he's pressed ability five fucking times in a row. High skill. Engrave your braces with purifying power rune. Reduces the cooldown on exorcism and holy wrath by 50%. What cooldown, bros? Reset every single global anyway. Holy wrath can now be cast at any target and will stun undead and demons. I mean, okay. Engrave your braces with purifying power rune. Reduces the cooldown on exorcism and... It's the same thing. I just read this. What is what is happening in my brain? Oh, nice. Okay, nice. A casual little 18%... A casual little 18% crit? Fuck off. Engrave your helm with sanctuary rune. Increases damage prevented by a blessing of sanctuary by 100% and increases damage done by a blessing of sanctuary by 30% of your block value. Prop rune. Okay, that's fine. Holy light spell reduces the cast time of your next holy light by 0.5 sec cast. Wait, what is the cast time of holy light? It's like 2.5 sec, right? 2.5. Your consecration damage can now be critical strikes and damage from your exorcism, holy shock, holy wrath, and consecration spells gains additional critical strike chance equal to. Dude! What the fuck are they? What do they mean, bro? How does everything have a million crit on it? I mean, you might as well just run this shit. 18%. There's no way it's going to be 18%. Like, what's the fucking point in this? It's just this bit. Pally healing is always based on... Yeah, then why is half the fucking disc shit got based on crit, dude? Like, look at this. Okay, just Surge of Light, but I'm still tilted. And Divine Aegis. Like, there shouldn't be anything to do with crit anywhere near priests, man. Fuck that shit. I'm going back up. I'm calm. I'm calm, chat. I Honestly, I think Shadow got... Good shit. This got fucking shafted, mate. I'll tell you that much now. Grave Belt. Aspect of the Viper. Hunter takes one aspect of the Viper, causing range and melee attacks to regenerate mana, but reducing your total damage done by 10%. In addition, 10% in maximum mana every three seconds. Gain. Mana gained is based on the speed of your weapon, one in aspect at a time. Okay. Standard. Grave your belt with expose or weakness. Your melee and range criticals. Increase your attack power by 40%. That's fucking spicy. What? 40% of your current agility. Is that a lot? Or is it going to be like 40 attack power? Hunter got shit runes. What are you saying, bro? Hunter, you know what? You don't even need any other runes. You got this. A good hunter, that's all he needs. They don't need anything else. I'm sorry that your pet didn't get 2,000 fucking percent modifiers again this patch. Got 190 Agi at 25 now unbuffed. So we're going to... We, I mean, 300's not unreasonable then. Next phase. Give Hunter Stampede, to be honest. Just get... Just show yourself out. I don't want to read it. Engrave your belt of melee specialist rune. Raptor Strike cooldown reduced to 3 seconds and is now instant. Mongoose bites, Bite cooldown removed. Raptor Strike has a 30% chance on each attack to not trigger its cooldown. What is this RNG, dude? Steady Shot. Steady Shot that causes 60% weapon damage. Nice and simple. If this was Paladin, it'd be like, 
a steady shot that causes 60% ranged weapon damage and increases your crit by 20%. And if you crit, then it gives you an extra steady shot for free that is instant. Grave your boots with dual wield spec rune. Increases damage done by your offhand weapon by 50%. Causes your raptor strike to strike with both weapons when you're dual wielding. And raptor strike deals 30% increased damage when you're dual wielding two weapons of the same type. Grave your boots with the invigoration rune. Your pet scores a critical hit with a special ability. You instantly regenerate 5% of your maximum mana. Sheesh. Trap launcher. Your trap's going to be placed at any loca location within 40 yards. It can be placed while you're in combat. Additionally, your fire-based and frost-based traps separate cooldowns. I swear, man. I swear survival's going to be so good. Focus fire. Consumes all applications of frenzy from your pet, increasing your ranged attack speed by 3% and granting 4 focus to your pet for each application of frenzy consumed. I mean, this is going to be... Like, you need to track that shit, man. Your pet gains frenzy each time it uses a basic attack, increasing its melee attack speed by 6% for 10 second stacks up to 5 times. TNT increases damage done by explosive shot and damaging traps. Rogue! Engrave your belt with the poisoned knife rune. Instantly throw your offhand weapon to deal normal offhand weapon damage with 100% chance to apply the poison from your offhand weapon to the target. Awards one call. This is a ranged ship. Poison knife benefits from all talents and effects that trigger or modify sinister strike. Right. This is a fucking ranged ship, man. Focus. I am, mate. I am. I'm just tilting off the face of the earth. But you know what? Don't mind me. Thank you for the prime. I mean, this has got to be a ranged ship, right? I mean, do they even need it? They have. Th Why bother with this? You can just. It makes no sense. Why would you ever run this? We could just run step. Oh man, I need a gap closer. Or you could just step. Ready? Shiro can toss PVE AOE damage. Master of Sub, uh, extra damage, 10% extra damage after you open for 6 seconds. We've got Waylay on Ambush and Backstab for the slow, increasing time between their melee attack by 10% and reducing movement speed by 50%. So this is going to be a physical slow. Nothing else on boots yet. Interesting. Uh, combat potency, you gain 20% chance to gain 15 energy each time you deal melee damage with your offhand weapon. Focus attacks, you gain 2 energy every time you deal a melee. I mean, it's just energy regenerate. Uh, honor on the Thieves, when player... Or party, uh, in your party, you quickly hits with a spell or ability. You get a combo point on the current target. The effect cannot occur more than once every second. I swear, we used to use this shit in RMP, man. There was a, there was a patch where we ran that shit. So yeah, I mean, Rogue's got Shadow Step. Um, Waylay's pretty good. Master of Sub's pretty good. Do they need more? They get their stuns. I think Rogue's fine. Empowered Rogue. Okay, so Priest. Dude, I'm not looking forward to facing Holy Powers next patch. I'm just not looking forward to it. It's going to be horrible. I might even reroll Alliance, man, just to not face that shit. I'm surprised that the rogue is getting shadow step and and shadow was whatever the fuck the other one is from stealth. Okay, empowered renew. Uh, your renew now heals one extra time immediately when applied and gains fifteen percent increased benefit each time it heals from your folk your your bonus healing effects. So this is the the coefficient, right? Or is it just flat extra fifteen percent extra? No, fifteen percent increased benefit each time it heals from your bonus healing effects. So it's fifteen percent more like point one point five from bonus healing. Okay. In addition, your renew will renew can be active on targets affected by another priest's priest's renew. So that's cool. That's this, this is nice. I don't hate this. Um, mind spike is kind of eh. Basically, it's like a, a spammable mind blast. Don't know if it's got a cast time or not. And it also increases the damage, the, the crit of your next mind blast by thirty percent, but it stacks three times. But the problem is, mind blast is not that good. So, but yeah. I mean, Shadow doesn't really need this, I would say. Renewed Hope. Engrave your belts with the Renewed Hope rune. Your heals from Flash Heal, Lesser Heal, heal Great Heal, and Penance. Nice that they've included Penance on it. Uh, have 10% increased critical effect when cast on targets with Weakened Soul. Wait, critical effect chance. That's so weirdly worded. Because I thought it was critical effect. It's critical effect chance. So it's just more 10% more crit. 10% versus 18%. Yeah, and this is like conditional on the fact that it's already got Weakened Soul as well. Engrave your boots with dispersion. You disperse into pure shadow energy, reducing damage taken by 90%. So good. You're unable to attack or cast spells, but you regenerate 6% mana every 1 seconds for 6 seconds. Dispersion can be cast while stunned, feared, silenced, and clears all snares. Movement impairing effects when cast and makes you immune to them while dispersed. Very nice. Standard dispersion. Uh, then we also got uh, on boots, we've got pain suppression. Instantly reduces all damage taken by a friendly target by 40% and increases the resistance to dispel mechanics by 60%. Eight seconds, so you're gonna have approximately 75 dis uh, percent dispel resistance with this up, due to the inherent hidden 10 percent dispel resistance in the game that shouldn't exist in the game. Rolling with the punches, I believe, is just not uh, a priest thing. I'm not sure why it's here. It's a rogue. Yeah, you can PS yourself, of course. This is probably the worst one I've seen out of every single rune so far. This is super, super bad for the game. Hopefully, no one's playing holy spec. Personally, I don't think that many people are gonna run it. This is like this is gonna be a massive noob rune. But yeah, you just like. 
if you see someone pop this, you just move away from it. It's just going to be very disruptive to, to fights in general because they're just going to be able to turret heals with no way to stop them. And it's just fucking stupid. I hope that you can't use things like the spell in this form. This is this is super toxic. This really, really don't want to see that. Despair. So this is just like spicy as fuck for Shadow Priest, right? Periodic damage from your spells can now be crit. So if it's like Void Plague, Pain, Devouring Plague, Mind Flay, all being able to crit, that's really fucking insane. Um, sadly, the crit chance is kind of low for Shadow. So we need to get some gear with crit on. That might be starting to pump a little bit more later when we have more crit. Uh, again, critical stuff. We have nothing to really increase our crit. So it's like the, the best thing we have is the... Uh, renewed hope for the extra 10% on weakened soul but putting things like this is really sad because offensively you're not really going to be critting that much so you know it's smite priest is kind of nice but yeah the oh i'm I, I wonder if the this works when you're just like playing disc right and you can just dot people up with like pain and void plague and then if you get crits on them then it procs surge of light maybe could be cool gives you an instant smite sadly you're still going to be sus suspect to, uh, subject to going oom um all the time because they didn't include the part of this uh that makes the spell free so that's kind of an important distinction. The fact that it's an instant, but it's not free is a big deal. And for me, it should be free. Uh, void zone, it looks like a PVE thing. You, depends how big it's going to be, though. If you can stand in this and make melee have to go off you, this is absolutely insane, right? If you can't, then it's basically useless in PVP and it's a PVE AOE mechanic. Where, yeah, summons a void zone that deals big formula shadow damage to enemies that stand within it every second for 10 seconds. Uh, Divine Aegis, standard Divine Aegis. I wonder if it'll be dispellable. Interesting to see in this version. Yeah, so crit heals that you don't have any crit for because you're not a paladin with their random 18% rune to give you more crit or 50% for no fucking reason from Sacred Crypt Shield. Provide a protective shield on the target, absorbing 80% uh, of the amount healed. Last 12 seconds. And then Shadow Fiend on the pants. We only seen one pants thing. I read Shadow Fiend was a book, not a rune in another post. I doubt, very much doubt. Um, but yeah, feel free to link the post. Creates a shadowy fiend to attack the target. Caster receives 5% mana when shadow fiend attacks. In Great Belt Fire Nova, your Fire Nova totem spell is replaced with Fire Nova, which causes your current Fire Totem to emit damage at its location. That's kind of spicy. Take it. Like, you've just got in here and you're already causing problems. Get out. Engrave your belt of male strong weapon. When you deal damage of a melee attack, you have a chance to reduce the cast time of next lightning bolt, chain lightning, lesser healing wave, healing wave, chain lightning, or lava burst by 20%. Stacks up to five times last 30 seconds. This is kind of nice. I like this. You can purge this. It's just. Like, allowing Enhanced Shamans to do a little bit more rather than just being a wheelchair class. Okay, Power Surge. Engrave your belt with the Power Surge room. Each time Flame Shock deals damage, it has a 5% chance to reset the cooldown on Lava Burst and Chain Lightning and make the next Lava Burst. Chain Light. What the fuck? Dude. S tier confirmed. Dude, Shamans without any fucking runes whatsoever were already S tier. Did you see the shit they're getting next, se like next, next patch when they get to 40? The talents, the, all that shit. They're already unreal, bro. They're going to be one-shotting everything. They are going to be one-shotting everything. Thank you. Sit down. Let alone with shit like this. This is going to be fucking insane, bro. Imagine you can have multiple fucking flame shocks up. Jesus. I think that's the most OP thing I've seen so far. Like, real talk. Can I get move, bro? Wait for proc cast instant lava burst followed by elemental chain lightning. Yeah, and imagine any overloads proc. It's just 100% It's a hundred percent kill. This is going to be fucking terrifying man like dispel flame shock at all costs boys this is a this is a fucking psa spell flame shock imagine you're casting a lava burst on someone and this shit fucking procs so you get a lava burst into lava burst both of them crit and then you do a fucking chain lightning as well holy paladin still can't yeah that's the only fucking saving grace man because they have everything else i'm surprised there wasn't a thing like oh when you crit you're using you, you clear all debuffs of the target or something ancestral awakening when you critically heal with your healing wave or lesser healing wave, you summon an ancestral spirit to aid you, instantly healing the lowest percentage health party member within 40 yards for 30% of the amount healed. What, like one time? They didn't get riptide. That's a big deal. Engrave your boots with a decoy totem rune. Decoy totem will redirect the next melee or ranged attack made against the target to the totem instead. So it's just grinding for melee. The target, uh, the totem also grants the target immunity to movement and parrying effects for 10 seconds. What if you kill it? It's like a 10 second freedom. Summons a decoy totem for 10 seconds with 5 health at speed. The target that will redirect the next melee. So it's it's like an intervene and a freedom. What if you kill the totem? Does the freedom go away? Surely you just kill the totem and the freedom goes off, right? It's interesting. Spirit of the Alpha increases, uh, infuses the target with the Spirit of the Alpha Wolf, increasing threat generated by 45%. So just, right, just fury, but it's targetable. 
Grave your chest or robe with the 200 mastery. Each time you strike an enemy with 200 weapon, you gain 30% attack speed with 200 weapon for 10 seconds. The totem dies before you even see it. So it's just a 10 second freedom. Is it dispellable? Like, this is fucking insane. I want freedom. Give me freedom. I want fucking freedom. Freedom's gross, man. Frostfire bolt. I was going to say, they're getting brain freeze. There it is. Launches a frostfire at the enemy, causing a bunch of damage. Slowing movement speed by 40% and causing an additional... Crossfire damage over 9 seconds. This spell will be checked against the lower resist. Okay. Hot streak. Anytime you score two non periodic spell criticals in a row using fireball, fire blast, scorch, living bomb, your next pyroblast spell will cast within 10 seconds will be instant. Yikes. Missile barrage gives arcane blast a 40% chance, and your fireball and frostbolt spells a 20% chance to reduce the channel duration. Your next arcane missile spell by 50% and reduce the mana cost by 100%. Missiles will fire every 0.5. So this is like standard missile baronish. It's going to be pretty pumpy. Spell Frost Bolt. Dude, how many different bolts are they getting? What the fuck? I can't even imagine all these bolts. Launches a bolt of Spell Frost on the enemy. Spell Frost damage. Slow movement speed by 40% for 9 seconds. Isn't, it just, isn't that just Frost Fire Bolt? It's literally the same numbers. I feel like this doesn't exist. Oh, it's the Arcane version. Instead of Frost Fire, it's like Frost Arcane. Brain Freeze. Your Frost Damage spells with chilling effects have a 15% chance to cost an X. Friable Frost Fire Bolt or Spell Frost Bolt to be instant cast and cost no mana. See, like, what the fuck is this about? Right? Here. Cost no mana. Where's that shit on Surge of Light, man? Like, why is it on proc instead of on crit? Mage's crit all the fucking time. Fucking tilted, man. Heals a friendly target for a bunch. Uses Arcane Fire and Frost Magic to freeze Corona Energy into a stored state for later use. You can hold this energy for up to 15 seconds before it combusts and expires. When unleashed, Heals a friendly target for a bunch. This spell is considered arcane fire and frost for talents. Bale fire bolt. Oh, good. Another bolt. What, what is this? Unleash a reality distorting burst of raw magic at your enemy. Dealing a bunch of damage. Each time you cast bell fire bolt, the damage of your next bell fire bolt within 30 seconds will be increased by 10%. And your spirit will be decreased by 10%. 30 seconds. Both stacking up to 10 times. If your spirit reaches zero... As a consequence, you will immediately, immediately die. The spell will be checked against the lower... What the fuck is this? So if you get to 10 stacks, you just die. I mean, yeah, the braces and helmet stuff isn't this phase, so it's more just like just seeing what the fuck they've, they're planning, right? This is some weird shit, man. Displacement tele teleports back to where you last cast Blink from and resets the cooldown on Blink. Only usable within 10 seconds of casting Blink. Mate, it's just gonna be slippery. Imagine carrying the flag with this shit. That's gonna be so annoying. Only belt and boots of this phase. Based uh, molten armor. Causes fire damage when hit. Dead elegy. Thanks to the 48, bro. Uh, causes fire damage when hit. Increases your spell critical strike, strike chance by 5% and reduces the chance you are critically hit by 5%. Only one type of armor can be active at a time. Deep freeze. Hey. Stuns the target for 5 seconds. Retail. Devs, take note. Deep freeze. Only usable on frozen targets. Deals a bunch of damage to targets permanently immune to stun. Engrave your helm with Temporal Anomaly Rune. Launches an orb of temporally, Temporal Energy. It slowly moves forward and every two second grants all nearby party members a shield absorb rolling. A bunch. So what, you just gotta fucking stand in it. Engraves boots with spell power. Increases crit check. Crit strike damage bonus of all spells by 50%. Jesus. Calm down. Would that mean deep freeze on a fap target deals damage? Yeah, I mean, I imagine so. Warlock. And then we've got Druid. And that's it. Okay. Grimoire of Synergy. I just, like... Okay, we'll do Warlock. Recite from a dark tome, granting damage. Do I just, I, I like, I'm, I'm already anticipating like a load of absolutely gross shit on Warlock. Recite from a dark tome, granting damage done by you or your summon demon, a five percent chance to increase damage done by the other. Okay, that's kind of whatever. Engrave your belt with invocation, refreshing, corruption, immolate, curse of agony, or siphon life with it when it has less than six seconds remaining. Will cause you to deal instant damage to the target equal to one period of that spell's periodic damage. So one tick. So basically, you can refresh dots before the end by one tick. Your critical strikes with fire and shadow spells increase your fire and shadow damage by 10% for 10 seconds. Engrave your boots with Dance of the Wicked Rune. Your, you and your demon pet gain dodge chance equal to spell crit chance each time you deal a critical strike to an enemy and both regain 2% mana. I mean, okay. Look like a tank rune. Engrave your boots with Demonic Knowledge Rune. Increases your spell damage and healing by a value of Value equal to 10% of your demon's pet, your demon pet's total stamina plus intellect. So this could be a good bit of damn. Shadow Flame, little AoE cone, no slow, can be consumed with conflict. 
I mean, this is not all stuff for next phase one, probably. This is all stuff data mined. Belt and boots is the new phase stuff. Glow was a glyph, okay. Immolation aura. Burns nearby enemies for damage every two seconds and reduces all magic dam damage taken by 10% until cancelled. Wait, does this do damage to you as well? No, right? Engrave braces with summon Felguard rune. Felguard benefits from all talents and effects that trigger from or benefit any of your other demon minions. Wait, what? Is it just buffing Felguard up like crazy or what? The Immolation Aura just looks permanent, no? Just damage every two seconds and reduces magic damage. Wait, why would you cancel it? Just to not break CC or what? The, the lock runes all seem very, like, small. Small passive stuff. And then they have UA. I mean, that's all they need, right? At least they don't have it this phase. We've got one more phase of gameplay. Braces. 300 all red spell guard. Oof. Your con flag ability also grants 30% spell casting haste. Yeah, this is pretty big. Pandemic. Periodic damage from corruption. I mean, this is just like Athlete, right? And this is Destro. They both look good. I mean, these this, these three things save all, everything else. Maybe the Fell Guard as well. Um, Emulation Aura looks weird. Like, why would you want to cancel it? It doesn't do damage to you. A grave Belt Berserk. When activated, this ability causes your Mangle Bear to hit up to three targets and have no cooldown. And reduces the energy cost of all your cat form abilities by 50%. Dude, barrels are going to be fucking sick next patch, man. I swear. Last 15 seconds requires bear form, cat form, or dire bear form to activate. Clears the effect of fear and makes you immune to fear for the duration. So yeah, it's like a 15 second will of the forsaken. New PvP items just mined. Link, please. Can druids trinket fear? So they have two breakers for fear, basically. That's scary, man. Druid looks scary. Uh, Eclipse. We've already read about this, but yeah. Starfire increases crit chance of your next two wraths by 30%. Wrath increases crit chance of your next starfire by 30%. I think, this is, I think wrath should reduce the cast time of your next starfire. Not increase the crit. Starfire is an absolute clunk bot to try and cast. Both effects stack up to four charges. Both spells also gain 70% anti -frame. We'll look at that in a minute. Uh, Nourish. Heals a friendly target for a bunch. Heals for an additional 20% chance. Uh, uh, heals for an additional 20% if you have Rejuve, uh, Regrowth, Life Bloom, or Wild Growth on the target. The spell benefits from and triggers healing touch. So it's just like a flash heal, right? The druids. Uh, Dream State. Your damaging spell critical strikes grant you 50% of your mana regen while casting for 8 seconds. Increases nature damage dealt to the target by 20%. Okay. This is like a boomy thing. Probably mostly for PvE, but if you're wrathing, I guess it's critting anything. You're just going to get good mana. What else have we got? Oh, this is rough, dude. This is a rough choice. Okay. Tiger's Fury. Now increases all fizz damage by 15% instead of a flat value. And instantly gives you 60 energy is no longer on global cooldown and has its own 30 second cooldown so this is like a almost like a thistle tea every 30 seconds right plus you get 15 percent damn this is really really good and then it's survival instincts when activated this grants you 30 percent max health for 20 seconds after the effect expires the health is lost usable in any form in addition you regenerate five rage every time you dodge while in bear form 10 energy while in cat form or one percent max mana while in other form i mean this is kind of like negligible this is like tanky boy stuff. This is okay. Ten energy while in cat form. This is nice against like something like a rogue, I think. But yeah, this is rough, right? This is like their way to survive. So they've got to choose how they've got to either choose to survive or be a big damn lord. But I mean, this isn't. I don't think this is as good as like when they get the damage reduction wall. But this is the max health wall. I personally would go for King of the Jungle. I think if I was playing Feral. Yeah. Efflorence, Swift Men now also causes efflorescence, healing all party members within. 15 yards of swift men's target location so it's just you swift men and there's an aoe heal great braces of frenzied regen your frenzied regen can now be used in all forms or while not shape shifted it now converts your active resource into health every second for 10 seconds up to 10 rage 10 energy or 5 percent base mana converted per second up to 10 percent health Fucking weird, man. i mean that's that's trash man i swear up to 10 percent health is that it that seems low man 10 percent health per second I mean, you don't want to use this in human form. You want to be using this in, in anything that's not human form, mate. What? Yeah, it's, it's, it's got to be 10% per tick, right? Up to 10 rage, 10 energy, or 5% base mana. So it's base mana, right? Not total mana. So base mana is the mana that your, your class has without any items equipped or buffs. So this is pretty nice in cat form, right? Because you're just going to have 100 energy. Like, why would you? I mean, why would you ever do it in bear form, then? You would just do it in cat form. This is this is really nice actually for Feral. Like Feral just gets a full heal basically. Okay, you lose your energy, but it's still nice. Gale wins increases the damage done by your Hurricane by 100%. It no longer has a cooldown, and its mana cost is reduced by 20%. Okay, so Druids finally have an AOE. Congrats. A Gore striking a target with Last Race Wipe and Maul 
The Pippin percent chance to reset the cooldown on Mangle Bear. Striking a target with Mangle Cat or Shred has a 5% chance to reset the cooldown of Tiger's Fury. Bruh. They need to chill with the fucking feral stuff, man. Jeez. Improved Bark Skin. Your Bark Skin can now be cast on allies. No longer penalizes melee combat speed or power spell casting time. And can be cast while spell while shapeshifted. That I mean that's fucking spicy, man. 5% for a 30 second cooldown in that game. No, but if it's like if you use Tiger's Fury, use your you like dump all your energy and then get another one. You can just like dump all your energy twice and just one shot someone. 